this this theorem, the Kuroff-Fisher theorem, is very powerful, and so the uh, so we will actually discuss many results that come out as a consequence of this theorem. Uh, the first is uh, a result which relates the eigenvalues of a plus b with those of uh, a or b. Uh, this is this is a theorem due to somebody called Weil, so it's called Weil's theorem. So let k be c to the n cross n be Hermitian symmetric matrices. Then, as usual, we'll arrange the eigenvalues. in increasing order. So I'm introducing notation here. So lambda i of a is the ith largest eigenvalue of a. So lambda 1 of a is the smallest eigenvalue. Lambda 2 of a is the second, is the next bigger eigenvalue and so on. And lambda i of a plus b is the ith eigenvalue of a plus b when the eigenvalues are arranged in increasing order. Then, for each k equal to 1, 2 up to n, we have okay lambda k of a plus lambda 1 of p is less than or equal to lambda k of their sum, and which is in turn less than or equal to lambda k of a plus lambda n of b. Now, when you look at this, this result, uh, I, I think um, at least some of you will see that the result is obvious. The kth eigenvalue of a plus b can is going to be at least lambda k of a plus lambda 1 of b, and at most lambda k of a plus lambda n of b. So, for example, if uh, D was uh, the identity matrix, then what you see from this result is that the eigenvalues of A plus the identity matrix are, actually you know this already, that all the eigenvalues of A will get shifted up by 1. And therefore, uh, this result is also saying that lambda K of A plus the identity matrix is at least equal to lambda k of a plus 1 and at most equal to lambda k of a plus 1. In other words, lambda k of a plus b is equal to lambda k of a plus 1. Okay, so let's see. Let's just write out how this thing is proved. Sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, a, a and b are, uh, can be interchanged here. Uh, yes, of course. So there's nothing special about B here. B is not uh, in any way different from A. A and B are both Hermitian symmetric matrices. So in fact, um, before I proceed, I'll I'll write that also. So you can uh, you can also say k of B plus lambda one of A is less than or equal to lambda k of A plus B lambda k of b plus lambda 1 of a, uh, lambda n of a. Okay, so uh, basically if you want to obtain bounds for lambda k of a plus b, you can choose the min of these two quantities, lambda k of a plus lambda 1 of b, lambda k of b plus lambda 1 of a. And uh, Sorry, you can choose the max of these two, that will still be a lower bound on lambda k of a plus b. And you can choose the min of these two, and that will also be an upper bound on lambda k of a plus b. So proof. 
So um, we know that for any uh, zero not equal to x in c to the n by the rayleigh ritz theorem, lambda 1 of b is less than or equal to x Hermitian bx over x Hermitian x is less than or equal to lambda n of b. So as a consequence, for any k, 1, 2, up to n, um, if I look at lambda k of a plus b, by my kurov fisher theorem, this is equal to the min over w1 through wn minus k. So I'm using the min max formulation. So you should pay attention to this because you will see that for some results, we will use this min max formulation. And for some other results, we'll start from the max min formulation. Okay. And it's actually a very interesting exercise to see if you can prove the same result by starting from the say from the max min formulation instead of the min max formulation. Okay, in some cases it'll turn out that the proof kind of works out the same way, but in some other cases it'll turn out that the proof going one way is much easier than the proof going the other way. So max over x not equal to zero, x perpendicular to all these vectors. of x Hermitian times a plus b times x over x Hermitian x. So this is just Kurov Fisher theorem just written out for this case. And uh, this itself I can write as x Hermitian ax plus x Hermitian bx over x Hermitian x. So I can I'll just instead of writing a whole step, I'll just say that this is equal to x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x plus x Hermitian bx over x Hermitian x. Now, um, this x Hermitian bx over x Hermitian x is at least equal to this. So if I replace the x Hermitian bx by lambda 1 of b, I'm only decreasing the value of whatever this thing is. So this is greater than or equal to I'll, in fact, I'll write that here itself so that it's clear. This is always for any x not equal to 0. This is greater than or equal to x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x plus lambda 1 of b. Okay, and so that means that this lambda k of a plus b is greater than or equal to, because I've replaced this by its lower bound, um, min over w1 through w n minus k max x not equal to zero x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x plus lambda one of b. Okay. And uh, this part now doesn't depend on x anymore, but this part by Kurov Fisher theorem, this is directly lambda k of a. And so this is exactly equal to lambda k of a plus lambda one of b. Okay, and in a similar way, instead of replacing this by lambda one, I could replace it by lambda n, and then I get an upper bound. And then I substitute lambda n here, and this is still equal to lambda k of a. So I get the upper bound that lambda k of a plus b is equal to the min uh, over something of the max over something. It's all these things that I'm not writing again and again. Um, x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x plus x Hermitian bx over x Hermitian x. And this is less than or equal to 
this min over all these things of the max over all these things, x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x plus lambda n of b. And this is just lambda k. Okay, that proves the result. Okay, so some uh, some small thing that you can think about is uh, when would equality be obtained in the bounds of the Weil theorem? Extermission bx by extermission x equal to lambda n b and lambda 1 b. So x is a variable of optimization here. Okay. So all lambdas are equal. Uh, um, <coughs> now you should think about it. Um, so for example, suppose b was equal to some alpha times uh, okay i'll write it as ui ui hamishan okay where ui is an eigenvector of a okay so suppose it was like this then um, yeah so by choosing uh, b b of this form and alpha being some positive number uh, you can actually attain these bounds you should you should i don't want to give you the whole answer here but uh, do think about it but uh, this is the form of the b that will attain these bounds 